off. I can't see the beam off. So it's Luke 17, 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, increase your faith. Excuse me, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes straight from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. <clears throat> this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How long is serving this morning is called to duty. On the 1960s, the United States was at war with North Vietnam. And you lived during, if you lived during that time, you remember how unpopular that war was. And if you served in that war, I say thank you and I honor you and I salute you. You younger people here, back then there was something called the draft. Every young man was conscripted, required to serve in the military for a minimum of two years. Well, I got drafted and I dropped everything I was doing to go and take my physical. There was no backing out by saying, you know what, I just don't like that war, so I don't think I'm going to go. You got drafted, you went. It was your duty, it was your obligation. The term duty calls probably was coined around military conscription. Well, duty called, and I went for my physical in Fort Des Moines. By God's grace, I did not pass my physical. I had just been in a car accident with a disabling injury. Duty called, I went, and I was rejected. I remember well the military man, whatever his rank was in charge, saying to those in the line who had passed their physical, welcome to the Tet Offensive. Some of those boys who answered when duty called never came home. A sober reminder for each of us that war is not a video game like the media, like the media media wants us to think. We watch a smart bomb zero in on a truck and boom, forget that there's somebody in that truck, somebody's son, maybe somebody's dad. I'm looking for a good segue into our scripture reading from Luke 17 today, and I think this verse 10 might just be the opportunity. Hear the words of the Lord. So you also, when you have done everything you were to do, shall say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Let me try to explain. We can never put God in our debt and can never have a claim on Him. Even if you win a soul to Christ, God owes you nothing. You have only done what is expected of you. You have done your best for the kingdom when you have done your duty. So, for those of you who expect God to rain down blessings upon you because you think He owes you for the work you've done, for the kingdom work you've done here on earth, well, don't expect to break out your umbrella anytime soon. If you're giving your tithe with the expectation that God will give you a double portion back, you've been listening to the wrong preacher. Using my examples, why do we do kingdom work? Why do we tithe? Because quite frankly, it is your duty. It's what the master, what God expects of his servant, you. Luke 17 concludes, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. 
So, real quick, let's look at this word duty. The definition is this, a moral or legal obligation, a responsibility. Among its many synonyms are these words, responsibility, obligation, faithfulness. And some of you might not like the word duty. That's okay. Let's look at another word that might be a little softer, more colorful to our taste. How about the word obedience? The meaning of obedience is compliance with an order, request, a law, or submission to another's authority. The general gives you a command, gives you an order. And it's the soldier's duty to comply, to be obedient. Now I know some of you here served in the military in your younger days. Did any of you negotiate when the commander gave you an order? Not being obedient, not being compliant with that order would probably land you in the brig. Why is it that so many think in today's world that they can negotiate with God? do it their own way and not suffer any consequences. I'm thinking it's because they don't recognize God's authority. They have placed themselves as an equal with God when it comes to their duty, their obedience. They fail to grasp Psalm 103 and its meaning. The Lord has established His throne in heaven and His kingdom rules over all. Here's a rule that they, even us, need to be ever mindful of. God is God and we are not. We are sinners. We're all sinners, each and every one of us. And we all need forgiveness. Too often sinners forget the first commandment. In Exodus 20, verse 3, we listen to God as He thunders out this command. And we watch as he carves this command in the stone with his finger. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Pretty clear, pretty concise to me. I pray it's clear and concise to you as well. But in today's world, there seems to be the spirit of rebellion among God's people. There is failure to recognize that God is sovereign ruler over the universe. Rest assured, though they or any of us may not have yet personally witnessed any of God's miracles, He is alive and well. Like the movie says, God is not dead. If you believe God is dead, if you believe that you can make up your own rules to suit your own lifestyle, then consider this from Isaiah 66. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. I don't know about you, but verses like that, where I experience the majesty, I experience the power and the glory of the Lord, cause me to step back and tremble in fear. Not as to be afraid, but as to respect, obey, do my duty, fear the Lord. Proverbs 9 tells us, Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Lord Jesus, give to each one of us, give to each one of us that kind of holy fear, that kind of knowledge in the Holy One. For us, for anyone to please God, we need to do our duty, fulfill our obligations, and for that, there is but one prerequisite, and that condition is faith. Hebrews 11 tells us, and without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Now the follow-up question to that verse might be this. How do we get faith? How do I get faith, we ask? 
like I taught in the confirmation class in years past. In the Bible, there is an answer to every question. How do I get faith? Let's look to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Paul pens these words for us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. You want faith? Then ask God for that gift. When you ask, believe that he will deliver. Believe what Jesus says in Luke 11. Then if you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You want faith? You want the Holy Spirit to indwell in you? Then ask God to come into your heart. You pray it. You ask for it. It will happen. Praise be to the Lord. Back to duty calls. Let's ask the question of ourselves as Christian. What is our duty? I can sum it up for you in two short sentences. You've heard me preach it a lot of times before. Get yourself to have it. Bring along as many others as you possibly can. That being said, let's turn back and read what the Bible might teach us. In response to the first statement, get yourself to heaven, let me ask, how do you know if you're going to heaven? It's a legitimate question. It's a soul-piercing question. Early in my life, I loved Jesus. But you know, I didn't really know if I was saved. I didn't know if I loved him enough to be admitted into heaven. Maybe some of you feel the same way. Let me help. You can pass. If you can pass the Romans 10-9 test, and our children sang it in our choir today, they sang this verse to you. If you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him up from the dead. What does the last part say? You will be saved. Yes. Now if you pass this test with an affirmative yes, Lord, yes, you've completed your first duty, get yourself to heaven. Now the second command at least in my opinion, is to bring along as many others to heaven as you possibly can. It's called the Great Commission, and Jesus teaches it in Matthew 28, and we hear his words. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Our call to duty finds us doing something that only a few of us enjoy. When the general calls you to march, you march. And so it is with the Great Commission, that command from Jesus. In the military, sometimes to march forward requires courage, so you dig down deep within yourself and do your duty. Jesus provides all the courage we need to evangelize the world. Oh, I know, you're thinking that evangelizing the world is a preposterous thought. So let's think a little smaller. How about your next door neighbor? How about somebody in your own family. Even so, you need courage. And here it is. Coincidentally, it comes from my baptismal verse in Joshua 1, 9. And it's been one of my mantras in life. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not, not be discouraged. For the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. Just to review and drive home your call to duty. Get yourself to heaven. How are you going to do that? 
by passing the Romans 10-9 test. If you can't confess Jesus with your mouth, and if you don't believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you and I need to talk. Your second call to duty is to evangelize. But you say, I'm afraid. I'm shy. I can't do that. I say, dig down deep and gather up your courage. For the day of salvation is at hand. Don't let your neighbor, your loved ones, slip through your fingers, as it were. How does Joshua 1, 9 close? Oh, yeah. For the Lord will be with you wherever you go. Whoever said being a Christian was easy? Even the Bible tells us that there will be trials. But the Bible also provides a loving Father, a loving Son, Jesus Christ, to provide us a way to endure all things. So armor up, people. Put on your big boy pants. Put on your big girl pants. You've now heard your call to duty. To God we give glory. Amen. Um, let's pray. Oh Lord, you call us to duty. And we ask for courage to do that you want us to do. To do your will. That your kingdom might come here on earth, even as it is in heaven. Help us to be part of that process. And not just to sit in the bleachers and watch what's going on, but give us the courage and help us armor up so that we can get in the game and witness to maybe even a loved one. For this we pray, Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord.